Hey, what is up guys? Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial that's been heavily requested for quite a while now. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to add more colors to your neon portraits. Let's go. Sometimes when you shoot in front of a neon sign, it only has one color, or it predominantly only has a single color. Now some people kind of like this look where only a single hue is incorporated into their photo, but for me I like it when my photos are colorful and at least have like two or three colors. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how I add more colors into my neon photos. For this tutorial, I'm going to be focusing on how I use Photoshop to do this technique, but we're also going to incorporate some Lightroom. Now the first thing you want to do is get your preliminary edits done. Now I do this in Lightroom. Now this is the photo that we're going to be editing today. You can see that it's predominantly purple and I want to incorporate some more colors into that Maybe make it a little bit more blue and a little bit more pink So the preliminary edits include getting the right exposure because usually I like to shoot underexposed Because I like exposing for the brighter parts of the image. It also includes skin retouching now skin retouching I like to do at the start but some people prefer to do it at the end. It's really just a matter of preference. It can also include fixing your white balance, which is really important to get the tone and the colors of the look that you want. So white balance includes the color temperature and the tint. And basically what you wanna do is get your colors in the ballpark of where you want it to be for the final output. So for this image, I've already done the preliminary edits. So that includes a lot of the things that we talked about. And I don't wanna delve into it too much because it's really up to your taste. And this tutorial focuses mainly on Photoshop. So I wanna dive straight into that. So this is basically the preliminary edit that I have done. And you can see that I already brought out more of the blues. What I wanted to do is get it to the blues and then I'm gonna add more pinks later because you can see that there is some pinks here and that's what I wanna put in the sign and here at the back so that it kind of makes more sense that there is pink on her skin. By the way, our model today is Steffi. You can check out her links down below. I'll put her Instagram there. So yeah, I did the skin retouching and then I added some pinks and some blues, but still I want to have that neon sign have some more pink and the back here, the door here, have some more pink as well. So now that you're done with Lightroom, you want to open your photo in Photoshop. So you do this by going up here to photo, edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2019. Now that you're in Photoshop, this is where a bulk of the work is done. Now the first thing you wanna do is prepare to add the extra colors by adding a duplicate layer of your photo. So you can do this by hitting Command J and you can see here that it has created a copy of the photos. And this will be the layer that you're gonna use to add more color to the base photo. So we're gonna rename it and name it new color layer. I cannot type. <laughs> So, okay. Next, what you wanna do is open a hue saturation adjustment layer. So it's over here, this middle icon, hue saturation. And now that you have it, this next step is quite important for the effect that you want to get. So what you wanna do is have the hue and saturation layer only affect the new color layer. So you can do this by hitting Option Command G. So you can see that there's a little arrow over here and that basically means it'll only affect the new color layer or whatever layer is right underneath it. Now that you've prepared it, the fun part begins. Now you wanna drag your hue slider here and try to find a color that you want to add. So for this, I wanna add more pinks or more magentas. So I'm gonna drag it over to this range here. So now that we've got that, this is basically the color that you want to add to your photo. Usually what you wanna do is go for a color that is a little bit different from the original one that you have. So in this case, the original color is blue. So now what I wanna do is add some more pinks. So now that you've got that, you wanna offset your new color layer to the left or to the right by selecting the new color layer, hitting Command T, and then moving five to 10 steps to the right or to the left using your arrow keys. So here, all right, I think that's enough. Hit enter and your changes are saved. Now this is why I choose to use Photoshop. One, because you can do that offset thing, and two, because it has blending modes. Now you wanna use one of your blending modes, you can go over here beside opacity, go down, and usually I recommend lighten or screen. For this, I think I'm gonna use lighten. Now that I've done that, it kinda has this 3D effect, which is nice, but we wanna just have that effect hit over here and over here so that you can add colors. So what we're gonna do is add a new layer mask. It's down here. 
hit that, and you wanna add the new layer mask to your new color layer. Now what you wanna do is inverse this mask. So you're gonna go over here, and instead of selecting on the photo of the new color layer, you select the mask. And then you hit Command I, and that basically turns off that layer. So now you wanna paint it back. So using your brush tool over here, with a hardness of 0% and a size that will help you paint back to that layer, just get your brush and paint it back. Now don't worry too much if you get some stuff wrong because you can always hit X and if your selection is black and white, you can use that as an eraser. So here what we wanna do is just paint more colors to the sign because you can see here that there's pink on our skin. So you wanna make that photo make sense. So we're adding some pinks here to the blues and on this side by the door, we wanna add pink as well. So just here by the door frame. Now be careful of adding too much here where it overlaps with your model. So here I'm just gonna take this out so it blends more nicely and it doesn't have any harsh edges. Now talking about seamless, remember that you offsetted the new color layer just a bit, but you still have those harsh edges because you moved the photo, so we're gonna fix that. So over here you can see it's not really visible, but if you zoom in, you can see these lines over here. This is where the photo would end, and yeah, you can see it there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna duplicate the hue saturation layer and the new color layer, and make sure that they're still attached to each other. Now you wanna click the layer mask of the new new color layer. Kinda of confusing, but yeah, this is the new color layer copy. You wanna click that and hit delete layer mask. Now it's gonna look like you reverted everything, but we're gonna fix that. Now you wanna move this using command T and you just drag it until it's centered again and hit enter. Now you're gonna do the same thing with the mask, but this time just this part. So here you're gonna hit add layer mask Hit Command I, and then with a white 0% brush, you're gonna brush over this part and just take out that harsh edge. So yeah, that's basically the technique. It's pretty simple if you follow the steps right, but the hard part is trying to figure out what colors will blend with what. So that is all up to you. And you'll realize which colors go better with what when you do trial and error. So it's all about really just experimenting on Photoshop. It can be a lot of fun if you know what you're doing. So yeah, that's basically it. All there's left to do is to do some final coloring. Now I like to do this with some hue saturation layers and selective color. So basically you're just gonna add more layers on top of this to get your colors where you want them to be. So here I already have an edit prepared. So I'm just gonna turn off what we did and then I'm gonna turn on the edit that I prepared. And yeah, that's basically it. I separated the adjustments here versus the edit that we did here. So this is basically the same thing that we did. So here, this is the photo. It's kind of similar, basically identical. And then I just added a little bit more of, you know, coloring and just getting the tones where I want them. Again, using some curves, hue saturation, and selective color. So yeah, when you're done with your finishing touches, hit Command S to save it. It'll go back to Lightroom. And from there, you can export it the way you normally would. So yeah, that's about it for this tutorial. Here's the final image. I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. And if you do end up using it, I love to see the photos that you guys come up with. So tag me at GabPolitely on Instagram if you post it there. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more content like this. And leave a comment down below if you have any other tips with Lightroom or Photoshop, or if you have any questions. I'll talk to you guys down in the comments below. And if you have any questions, that's where I'll answer them. All right, that's about it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, you're still here. Well, anyway, I have one more thing to say. I just wanna say that I'm really happy with this lighting setup. The guys at Photix Philippines sent me over their Nuada R3 and S3, and it's really useful and it's really soft. It's nice for bouncing off the wall. There's a light here, I'm gonna show you guys. So yeah, there is a light here. This is the Nuada R3. It's just bouncing off the wall over there. It's just really nice. Anyway, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I'm really happy to be using this light. And yeah, it's really fun. All right, that's about it, for real. See you guys in the next video.